The year is 1471. England is gripped in another bloody civil war. Two branches of the powerful Plantagenet family, who have ruled England for over 300 years, are vying for the English crown. The two sides, one called the House of York, and the other, the House of Lancaster, clash over many years. The main cause for the War of the Roses was Henry VI's disastrous rule. Henry was not a warrior king like his father, Henry V, who had nearly conquered all of France. Henry VI was also prone to having mental episodes throughout his rule, which hindered the ruling of the country. This led to many power-hungry nobles to try and take control, most notably the Earl of Warwick. As political discontent mounted against the king, his advisers called for reform and challenged the authority of the king. Throughout this political discourse, Henry suffered a series of mental breakdowns. However, his wife, Margaret of Anjou, was a powerful and ambitious woman, and with her by his side, she limited the damage Henry could cause. Despite Margaret's attempts to stabilise the government, factionalism spread and civil unrest was rife, while many nobles resented the king over his lack of leadership and the loss of land in France during the Hundred Years' War. These series of events led to a question over the succession. This last event was the straw that broke the camel's back. Civil war broke out in 1459, with Richard, the Duke of York, the king's cousin, leading the opposing side. Within a year, the Duke of York was in control, having taken the king into custody with the aid of the Earl of Warwick, also known as the Kingmaker. But despite having a genuine claim to the throne, York was not proclaimed king, instead made heir to the throne. However, this proclamation was short-lived, as York was killed in the Battle of Wakefield a month later. With York dead, his eldest son Edward inherited his claim, and despite being only 18, Edward was a capable military leader. Soon after, he defeated the Lancastrians in a series of battle with the aid of Warwick. These victories enabled Edward to be crowned Edward IV, the first Yorkish king. After a few years of further fighting, most Lancastrian forces were defeated. Margaret of Anjou had fled with her son to France, and Henry VI had gone through a trial of escape, recapture, escape, recapture. But in 1470, Edward IV had to flee England as his most powerful ally, the Earl of Warwick, turned against him over issues relating to Edward's marriage to Elizabeth Woodville and the rise of the Woodville family in English politics. With the aid of Warwick, Henry VI was briefly restored to the throne as Warwick had made a deal with Margaret of Anjou. Edward had fled to Burgundy to raise an army capable of taking back his kingdom. Soon returning to England with a small force, he headed to York to reclaim his dukedom. Following this, he gained a substantial force of men-at-arms. Edward then set off towards London, and while on his journey, he bolted his forces, soon entering London with ease and capturing Henry VI again. With Edward back in control, Warwick and Margaret soon assembled their forces, but before Warwick and Margaret could join forces, Edward IV intercepted Warwick at the Battle of Barnet. The ballad is known for having incredibly foggy weather. The fog aided Edward, as Warwick's forces were not in their proper formation, and soon accidentally mistook some of their own forces as the enemy. As cries of treason were shouted out and seeing his brother being killed, Warwick tried to retreat but was cut down by a Yorkist soldier. With Warwick dead, Edward knew all he had to do was defeat Margaret of Anjou's forces and England was securely his. Edward IV's spies soon alerted him to the whereabouts of Margaret's forces, realising that Margaret was trying to rendezvous with Jasper Tudor's forces in Wales. Edward marched his forces towards the city of Gloucester, where he sent a message to the governor to close the city and its gates to the Lancastrian forces. This forced the Lancastrians to go around Gloucester, as a siege was not strategically viable. The Lancastrians had to march towards Tewkesbury, as the town was the nearest crossing to Wales. Edward's forces were fast on the move, reaching Cheltenham on the 2nd of May 1471. As both forces marched rapidly towards their desired goal, each side were fatigued and some of the Lancastrians had to leave behind some artillery which would be acquired by the Yorkists. The Lancastrians decided to rest for the night at Tewkesbury, as crossing the river would have been a dangerous task for the exhausted troops. Edward's scouts soon reported the location of the Lancastrian forces, and with one final drive his troops reached Tewkesbury. The Lancastrians knew they had to engage the Yorkists, otherwise they would be at risk of being flanked. On the morning of the 4th of May 1471, both sides drew up their battle lines. The commander of the Lancastrian forces, the Duke of Somerset, ordered the troops to take a defensive position along the ridge north of the River Avon and Severn, with Chooksbury Abbey northwest of their location. Somerset deployed the Lancastrian forces into three battle lines, planning on flanking the left side of the Yorkist forces while the main centre of the army, commanded by Lord Wenlock, would push forward to try and break through. 
The Lancastrian's main army consisted of men-at-arms, dismounted knights, longbowmen, and a few cannons. The total number of the Lancastrian army was around 6,000 men strong. The Yorkist army was positioned not far from the main road into Chooksbury, with their left flank not far from a dense wooded area that was on high ground. This high ground would play a crucial part in the battle. The Yorkist army was deployed in the same fashion as the Lancastrians, with three battle lines each commanded by one of three commanders. However, the Yorkist army fielded a slightly different army, consisted of mounted noble knights who would fight dismounted as this was the English custom at the time. The Yorkists also had more cannons and archers than their Lancastrian counterparts, and a few hundred mounted spearmen which Edward placed on the high dense wooded area near his left flank. With both armies now in position, the battle began with a barrage of artillery fire, with archers on both sides firing wave after wave of arrows. This continued for some time as the Yorkists found it difficult to move in the terrain due to the ditches and embankments, yet the Yorkish cannons were making dents in the Lancastrian lines. Somerset now moved his line to engage King Edward's left flank, and a bloody melee began. Though King Edward's left flank were taking heavy casualties, they held the line. Yet despite the initial success, Somerset's forces did not receive the support needed from Wenlock, who had held back the centre of the Lancastrian army. Then, at the opportune time, the 200 mounted spearmen who King Edward had placed in the high wooded area charged down on Somerset's own flank and routed his forces. Furious that he was not supported, Somerset rode back to Wenlock and petitioned why he did not support him, then applied an axe to his face and fled to the abbey. With the main commander having fled and the secondary dead, panic spread and the Lancastrian army soon broke and fled with many running towards the abbey, or trying to cross the river, yet many drowned due to their heavy armour. The rest were cut down as they tried to escape. The Lancastrian heir to the throne, Prince Edward, was also killed, either during the battle or executed shortly after. Despite a few further Lancastrian rebellions, Edward IV had secured England for himself. With the Lancastrian heir dead and Henry VI murdered a few days after the battle, little was left of the Lancastrian branch. The only member who could challenge him was Henry Tudor, who had fled to France. Edward IV would rule England for another 12 years before suddenly dying. The next and final phase of the War of the Roses would begin. Thank you for watching our documentary on the Battle of Tewkesbury. This video was made using assets from Medieval Total War 2, Mountain Blade Warband and Google Earth. If you'd like to see more documentaries like this, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much and we'll see you for the next documentary.